Hey, what is the fan club? How do you use it in research? Uh, recently in, a, in an episode, I mentioned the fan club without really explaining what it was. So today I'm going to explain exactly what that is and I'm gonna use it in a real example with the whole story and everything to show you how it works when we come back. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, if you like what I do, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Now, Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Uh, links for all of that are in the show notes below. Now, I'm going to get to the fan club in just a moment, but First, I wanted to let you know that for the uh, information access level channel members, there is a handout for this. So make sure that you check the uh, community tab uh, to find that. And if you want to become a channel member, all you have to do is click the join button below the video on the YouTube channel. I'm going to explain what the fan club is. I'm gonna use an example of how uh, I used it to help solve a problem in my family. And really, it's a great story. So uh, stick around to the end because I, I do have a conclusion there at the end. All right, so what is the fan club and how can you use it for research? The term fan came from uh, Elizabeth Schoen Mills. She coined the phrase uh, to be friends, associates, and neighbors. Also known as cluster research, this strategy is used uh, to research the friends, associates, and neighbors or the community at large you know, those who are surrounding your target ancestor in which you are researching. Using cluster research is truly one of the best ways to prove that the records you are reviewing are actually belonging to your ancestors. It is those associations that help you tie those records together and to tie your ancestors together. A simple example might be a marriage certificate naming the bride's maiden name and where the witness uh, was one of the sisters of the bride, and it also uh, has the same maiden name. So that ties those two people together in one document, but taking the fan club strategy one step further, let's say you find a census record where you're not sure if that ancestor listed in, your, uh, in that record is your ancestor or not. So comparing the census record with the marriage record, you can see that the bride's sister who was the witness in the marriage record, is living next door on the census record. Now you know that you've tied together those maiden names, you've tied the women together from the census record and the marriage record, so that you know that you now have two records with the same family members, and that's all kind of tied together. So that's a very simplistic example of how that works. Let us take a real example where multiple records are proven to be a cluster tying the records and family together, but with a little surprising twist. And this is another reason why you want to keep good research notes in chronological order, because it helps you tell the story just like this one, because I use my research notes to help pull it all together for this story. All right, meet my great-grandfather, Herman Miller Madsen. Herman was born in 1880 in Laramie, Wyoming, and married a Danish immigrant named Francis Johnson. She was born in 1880 as Francisca Emily Cornelia Jensen. Herman and Francis married in 1905 in Laramie, Wyoming. So now you just have a little background about Herman and Francis. Also meet Herman Madsen's father, Christopher Madsen, also a Danish immigrant born in 1805 in Denmark. Christopher and his son, Herman, owned a grocery store in Laramie, Wyoming called the Gem City Grocery Store. Now the first tip about the fan club or a cluster research is to read everything in every piece of evidence. So if you note in the caption under this photograph, it says that the grocery store is located on the corner of 2nd and Grand Avenue. So hold that thought. Herman was found in numerous newspaper articles, which also helped tell his story and helped fill in some of the cluster or community in which my great-grandfather Herman and his family lived. 
In this newspaper article, we find Herman Madsen and Chris Madsen together regarding the grocery store. This ties the article together with the father and son as stakeholders in the store, as well as alternate spelling of Christopher. All right, so now let's talk about some land records. In 1909, Herman Madsen bought a pool hall, and in 1912, he later traded that pool hall for a ranch in the country outside of Laramie. He was chasing his dream of becoming a rancher. Now, sadly, in 1916, Herman and Francis could not make a go of it with the ranch, so it went into foreclosure. Now what happened next was rather interesting and starts to tie the fan club together with Herman. Keep in mind that throughout the entire research process, we need to question everything. For example, are these records that I'm reviewing my ancestor? And how do I know? I will answer that shortly, but let's move on. On March 18th, 1916, the bank sold the ranch under foreclosure to the highest bidder, who was a guy named Chris M. Tegner. Now later on, on the 9th of March, 1917, a sheriff's deed showed that Chris Tegner paid $1,775 to purchase the ranch. I'm assuming it took that long for the transaction to go through or there was just some sort of waiting period. The documents really don't give me that information. On the same day, the 9th of March, 1917, Chris Tegner sold that ranch to Chris Madsen. This was Herman's father for $3,500. Thus, Chris Tegner doubled his money in the same afternoon and the family ended up with the ranch again. Now, I was intrigued. Who was this Chris Tegner guy and how did he fit into the circle of influence with uh, my ancestors, Herman and Christopher Madsen? I remember seeing his name pop up in several documents. More importantly, could I prove these documents about the ranch were my ancestors, Chris and Herman Madsen? I strongly suspected so, but I wanted other evidence to help prove my case. So I started digging into Chris Tegner's life. This was somebody that was not part of my family. I did this by researching his name and location, but I also added him to my Ancestry.com tree by creating a floating tree. If you are not familiar with a floating tree, it is someone who is uh, associated with your family, but you connect them and then disconnect them uh, just so that you have them in your tree without creating a new tree. That's another episode for another day, okay? So here is the process for creating a proof statement as I'm trying to prove that these people and these documents tie together. So my hypothesis was, and well, a hypothesis is where you write about what you're trying to prove, okay? So my hypothesis was, Chris Tegner is a friend or a well-known associate to the Madsen family. And the land records referred to in the ranch is in fact my great-grandfather, Herman Madsen, and his father, Christopher Madsen's property. So this is my hypothesis that I am now going to try and prove. So the next step is correlation of evidence. So in, in this step, you're actually trying to collect all the evidence together and you're trying to either see if it proves or disproves your hypothesis without confirmation bias. Now confirmation bias is when you uh, want to, uh, confirmation bias is, is, is kind of interesting because this happens a lot and people don't even realize they're doing it. So confirmation bias is when you want to prove something to be true to the point that you make all the evidence fit your case. And so you want to prove your case without confirmation bias. You want to weigh the evidence equally and fairly to prove that or disprove your hypothesis. So gathering all the evidence found demonstrates proof of this hypothesis by the following evidence that I uh, found. And I've truncated some of this evidence because I found so much <laughs> that it was a little much for the video. So uh, this is the key evidence that is important for this demonstration. All right, so I found multiple Laramie, Wyoming newspaper articles containing Chris Madsen and Chris Tegner in the same article about the Danish Brotherhood. So Chris Madsen, remember that's Herman's father, Chris Madsen and Chris Tegner belong to the same society as did their wives. There were numerous uh, census records and newspaper articles that tied Herman Madsen and Chris Madsen together as father and son. There was a newspaper article where Chris Madsen and Chris Tegner are together as pallbearers at a funeral. Chris Tegner, or C.M. Tegner as it was listed in this business directory, 
has uh, multiple city directories showing him as a real estate investor, a fire insurance person, and a barber, all located in the same street, very close together at the same intersection, uh, located at 102, 108, and 109 Grand Avenue over different times. He had different buildings and at 305 Second Avenue. Now the Gem City grocery store that the Madsons owned was located at the same intersection at Second and Grand Avenue. Herman Madsen owned a billiard hall at 303 Second Avenue. Chris Madsen was born in 1850 in Denmark. Chris Tegner was born in 1863 in Denmark, and Herman Matson was born in 1880 in Laramie, Wyoming. Now the conclusion of all this, okay, this is the final step when you're doing uh, fan club research and you're trying to create a proof argument. So the conclusion is that without a doubt, Chris Matson is the father of Herman Matson, and by evidence of many census records, and quite frankly, my personal knowledge, okay? Which is also evidence. All right, clearly Christopher Madsen and Chris Tegner knew each other. Um, they were both uh, it, born in Denmark. They both belonged to the same Danish brotherhood as well as their wives. They both had a business within a few doors of each other, literally in some cases right across the street or right next door to each other. Most of their businesses were surrounded by uh, the intersection of Second and Grand in Laramie, Wyoming. Now, Chris Tegner was a barber at one time, and he likely cut the hair of Herman and Christopher Madsen uh, since they were literally across the street from uh, the grocery store they owned. Now, Chris Tegner uh, became a real estate investor about the time that Herman Madsen lost his ranch uh, to foreclosure. Now, seeing an opportunity, Chris Tegner bought it at auction, but it took a year for it to close the deal, and Chris Tegner paid the $1,775 to uh, finalize the purchase of the ranch, and Chris Madsen bought the ranch from Chris Tegner on the same day for $3,500, doubling Chris Tegner's investment in the same afternoon. Now, they probably had all of that worked out ahead of time. They had a year to figure it out, right? So Chris Tegner was definitely a friend or at least a close associate, but not a family member. This is how investigating the fan club, the friends, associates, and neighbors, how you can help use those uh, relationships to help tie the records together and tie your family relationships together to help prove your hypothesis and that the records that you are reviewing are in fact your relatives. So now, Go forth and find the fan club in your family history.